So what exactly were you convicted of? And you said you pleaded guilty. Yeah, it's always these days the general term is stock fraud for all of this. Jordan said it once in an article I liked that we were not really stock fraud. It was more st price manipulation. Okay? Mm. Every company we took public, I know many, but we would raise five, six, seven million for a small company, public company. It was a real company. The CEOs uh, were Harvard grads or attorneys. They were, these were emerging industries. I chose them. They received every dime of the proceeds. And, uh, you know, I used accountants and lawyers for everything. I think I chose companies, uh, albeit very small, that could grow. Hmm. You know, had potential to grow. And that's still happening today. It, it, there's a still, throughout the United States, throughout the world, there's the over-the-counter market is much larger than anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's the, the, uh, the emerging markets. As, and there's a need for it. I thought what we were doing, for me, and throughout, was a great economic benefit in that we were, I was teaching and hiring salesmen, and I was a pretty um, uh, well-educated salesman, formally and with experience. Uh, and in general, you know, I, I just think that we were also raising money for these little companies who couldn't go to cap to banks for capital. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's a necessary thing in our, in our economy. So, how did you emotionally survive from going from being all the way up here to being literally all the way down here? And, I mean, that's quite a vast difference to go from living, living large and, you know, living the life of a millionaire and then all of a sudden being in federal prison. Yeah, it's a horror, beyond belief. And to where you are today, and still on probation. And you sure? It's been an ordeal for 10 years in my life now, more. And um, it's been horrible, I can say that. But, but uh, you know, the best that I can say is that we were, um, I'm sorry, forgive me, go back on that one. Okay, just repeat that last No, how did you emotionally survive? Yeah. What did you do? Hey, you yourself. know, I'll tell you, it is a, when something that catastrophic comes into your life, you handle it on a daily, day-by-day -day basis. You turn, in my case, to God. And I prayed daily for strength. I was a strong man. I used all the principles I used to become successful in Wall Street to make it through prison and to make it today. That's what I've done. You know, it was not, certainly it has not been completely easy. But I thank God I've been strong enough to be able to handle it. Yeah, and I think one of the things about you that comes across is you are unscathed and you're still charismatic and you're still a lover of life and, uh, you know. Yeah, you can not lose that. You can't fight. Believe me, I've gone through depression. There's no doubt about that. I and mean, then deservedly so, I guess. But So can you legally sell stock today? No, I cannot. I cannot. I can buy and sell stocks from my own account. And I can sell many other things. Can you teach me to sell? I think I can. I teach people mm -hmm. to sell. I've still to this day. So do you have to be day. educated to sell? Or is you it a combination of innate talent and... It's learned and it's natural too. There are people who are more natural to it. If you're not an outgoing person at all, it's probably not for you. Mm -hmm. If you're not verbal, you need to be. So what kind of person did you hire as a broker? Some, an extrovert? Like what, what qualities were you looking for? Many. The main one being willingness, desire. If someone wants to learn, I'd rather have that than talent. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have to have a willingness and a desire, completely, and now a devotion. You know, we didn't take anyone. The first things we would say is you're pretty much in a business within a business, and you've got to take this very seriously to long hours, mm -hmm. and it's intensity of those hours. Mm -hmm. It must be that. Is that what drives people to midget tossing and? <laughs> Never Cocaine consumption? No, you no. never tossed a midget? No. No. Left no. that to Jordan? <laughs> yeah, they seem to do that. Mm -hmm. I felt bad for the midget. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little I little hope they got paid well. Right. <laughs> it's a little, uh, um, what's the word, derogatory? Yeah, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> yeah. So, how hungry do you have to be to make millions? Were you born this way? Not to quote Lady Gaga. Yeah, I would say a little bit. There was a, a commonality between a person like Jordan and myself. 
We were money guys. There were others like us, but we wanted the most, the best. We wanted it fast, quick. Patience was not really my, my strong point either. As a matter of fact, when you were a retail salesman at the big firms, that used to be considered one of the lowest rungs of the ladder on Wall Street. You know, there was operations, which you never wanted to be. Although some people did well there, there was a back office. Then there's retail sales. But the, the coveted areas are investment banking, trading, very difficult to get into. Institutional sales, which I had always aspired to. Mm -hmm. I thought eventually I would do that. But I learned a lot about retail sales when I went through Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately to Rothschild and Drexel. And I saw that retail could be very lucrative as well. We became retail salesmen. So did race or gender ever, was, were either of those ever a determining factor in the hiring process? Uh, no. I can say with my firm and with Stratton initially, I think the number one, well we were growing fast in terms of hiring, and I think it was the basically uh, friends of friends and um, anyone who was willing and desirous of a career in sales, and they heard there was money being made, so there were people coming in, and it probably was a general breakdown of, that you would see in society, maybe more white guys, but we had, uh, you know, Victor Wang, Asian, became a very big player, owned a company called Duke. He and I almost went into business. He was a good friend of mine for a while. And we had all, every type. Mm -hmm. But again, predominantly white guys. That's just the nature of the beast, same on Wall Street itself. Yeah. So, how do I get on the path to making millions? <laughs> I mean, you, it's funny you say it because there are definite laws to getting rich, to, to create wealth. You know, for instance, own something. You have to have ownership. In my case, for many of us, like Jordan and myself, where we didn't have money to start our own business and own something, these days you can own something and not become rich, of course. Right. But the second way where you can amass real money, wealth, is through uh, commission sales. Mm -hmm. I took the job because it was a commission sales job where I knew if I really did this well, sky was the limit. And it was in fact true in my first full year as a salesman I made almost a million dollars. And no one would pay me that salary that was strictly commission. So you ask me about what you would do, it's ownership in something mm -hmm. or uh, uh, something where you're involved, where sky's the limit, you don't even have to own the company. Mm -hmm. A star salesman can very very often make more than the president. That's what it feels like. As you mean. intended to do I, with Jordan. I, I, even for me at LF Rothschild, the firm where I really uh, shine, I should say, for, yeah, yeah, for um, a period of time, I wanted to outdo everyone in the room. I wanted to be known and recognized and I was not shy, and I really delved deeply into the subject, and I think I came up with the things that would lead to uh, being extremely successful. And that's what I preach to this day. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Isabel Dungan, and I'm here with Mark Hanna. If you'd like to tune into his radio show, Mark Hanna's World, go to nytalkradio.net. Hey, Mark. Yes, Isabel. You like speaking publicly, don't you? Uh, well, I've, I've had to do it in my career for years, and I still do. Yes, it's important, it's necessary. Well, viewers, Mark is available for speaking engagements. If you would like to contact his agent, you can email him at wesleyleeallen at aol.com. Good idea.